Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson three of my MIPS assembly programming tutorials. We're going to continue learning the MIPS assembly set, and today we're going to be looking at conditions, branches, and set commands. Now, this is quite interesting because um, the MIPS processor doesn't work like the vast majority of other um, retro processors, for example. And most processors, when you do a condition and a comparison, you would set a set of flags. Now, the MIPS does not work like that. It has no flags, and our comparison commands actually specify a pair of registers and an address or relative offset to go to if the comparison turns out to be true. So we have no flags, um, that's just the way this processor works. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at a series of examples and we're gonna see how the different conditions work and um, we have a few tests with them. What I'd suggest you do though is if you download these examples yourself, and I mean really I'd always suggest this anyway, but if you download the examples yourself, you can try different values and really check you understand how the different branches work with different values. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be using the PlayStation emulator again, although these should work on the N64 as well. Let's go over to our source code and let's take a look. Okay, so here's the file. We're looking at lesson three here and we've got a jump lock here with a variety of different tests we could run and we're going to run the first one. The very simple test equals not equals. So let's fire this up and let's run it and see the results. Now one thing I should point out is like the vast majority of times here, um, some of the commands we're going to see here today are literally commands and others are actually pseudo operations, macros made up of a variety of other commands. And for, for the purposes of today, we're not going to actually um, concern ourselves with whether they are literally a command or a combination. I just wanted to point out to you that some of them are actually made up of multiple other commands. Okay. So what are we um, looking at then with these um, comparison commands? Well, as I say, um, there are no flags, and so our command is based only on the contents of the um, registers that follow it. So this BEQ will branch if equals, and the two parameters are A0 and A1, and the destination is the label print equals. Now, print equals is something that I've defined. Basically, I've got a set of simple um, functions here that will just print simple characters to the screen, and this is just so that we can see which branch occurred. So what the BEQ command will do, will compare A0 and A1, and if the two are equals, a branch will occur to the specified destination. Now, if the two aren't equals, nothing will happen. But what I've then got following it is the BNE command, which will branch if A0 is not equal to A1, and we will jump to this not equals label, and that will, well, unsurprisingly, print a not equals to the screen. Now, the way I've got this set up, A0 equals 100, and A1 equals 101. And so, obviously, these two are not equals, so the branch to print not equals has occurred, and we've shown the two registers to the screen, and the result of the branch is that the not equals string has been shown to the screen. Now, as I say, the idea is you could download this example, and you can change the values. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rim out the line here that set A1 to 101 and I'm going to now set the two to be the same value. And if I just start this up again here, well now the two values are equal. So you can see uh, two registers equal the same value and so the branch has occurred to the equal string here. So that's, um, that's how you can use these two. So this is how you can um, test if two registers are the same. Now there are a wide variety of options and you can see a large list of them here. We're gonna be trying a variety of them in today's example and we're gonna see how they work. Now the branch if equals and branch if not equal of course work whether our registers are signed or unsigned because we're, we're only really comparing and um, relating to whether the two are, the difference between the two is zero. Other comparison commands though do require us to think about whether our registers are signed or unsigned numbers because um, a minus one will be a value where all of the bits in our register are equal to one and so this if we were comparing it with an unsigned compare would appear to be an extremely high number. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to use some unsigned comparisons now. So here we're setting our registers to 199 here. Now we've got these commands, BLTU, branch if less than, unsigned. That will branch if A0 is less than A1. BGTU, branch if greater than, unsigned. So that will branch if A0 is greater than A1. BLEU will branch if less than or equal 
So if A0 and A1 were the same, that would also branch. Or if A0 was less than A1, and BGEU will branch if greater than or equal to, and unsigned, of course. So as a, in these cases, the U at the end signifies that these are unsigned comparisons. So here we're going to compare A0 and A1. A0 is going to be 100 and A1 is going to be 99. So what will happen? Well, let's find out. Okay, so here we go. We're firing up our code here. And so in this case, A0 is 100 in decimal, that's 64 in hexadecimal. A1 is 63. Well, what has occurred? Well, the branch if greater than unsigned, where A0 was a greater than A1. So this is branched to show a greater than symbol. So you can see we've got that here. Now, if we change this, of course, if we changed so that A1 was equal to 100, well, now one of these two will occur and branch if less than or equals unsigned is first. So we're going to end up going to this less than equals label, one would assume. Let's check that really happens. Come on, there we go. And so you can see here, we've got a less than equals. Now, of course, the important thing to understand is that this will only work if we are um, working with unsigned numbers. Now, if I put in here li a1 comma minus one, well, a1 my, with a value of minus one, well, a0 should be greater than a1. So we would expect this branch of greater than unsigned to occur and to show a greater than symbol. But let's um, just see what really happens because maybe, yeah, obviously we are making a mistake in this assumption because we're using unsigned condition comparisons here. So what actually happens is um, our value of minus one is this huge unsigned value with all of these Fs here. So that is a very, very large value there if this is an unsigned register. If it's a signed register, that's just minus one though. So actually our branch if less than unsigned has occurred because it thinks A1 is a very large value when actually we meant it to be a very small value. So the incorrect branch has occurred there. And that's why we need different commands. So we have these signed commands to allow us to work with negative values. So again, as I always say, it's not the um, it's it's not the values in the registers that define whether the the number is minus one or a very very high value with all the bits set to one. It's the comparisons and the way we use those registers. Now you saw before we had a U at the end of all of our um, comparison commands here. Well, now we have the same commands without that U at the end. So these are signed comparisons. So you could kind of say that the MIPS default is to work in a signed manner and the, um, the, the alternate commands are the unsigned versions, which often seems to be the case with these um, with very large 32-bit registers, which you know, it makes a lot of sense where coming from an 8-16-bit world where 32 bits was so enormous you never thought about it. It makes, it makes sense for them to all be treated as signed by default, I suppose. So let's try these out and let's see what happens. So this time A0 is a value of minus 100. A1 is a value of 99. So you can see there's our minus 100. If we were treating that as unsigned, that would be a huge number. And A1 is 63 here. Now the result we've got is a less than here. So which has occurred? Well, this branch if less than has said, well, if A0 is less than A1, then show a less than. Otherwise, we would have shown a greater than or a less than equals or greater than equals. Well, because it's a signed number, A0 is indeed less than A1. And so we have shown a less than. But as I said before, if we had used a branch if less than unsigned, if, if we'd have used that command instead, uh, this would have been incorrectly assumed to be a very high number and that wouldn't have worked. So we have all four of those options for working with signed numbers. So there we go. Now, as I say, a lot of these commands are actually, in some cases, made up of multiple commands. And um, we can actually, of course, use the, the hardwired zero register as one of our parameters. And this allows us to have these um, branch um, comparing to zero commands. So if for some reason we want to work with less than or equal to zero and greater than or equals to zero, we have these commands here. Branch if equals to zero, branch if not equals to zero. Those are quite common actually on other systems. And branch if less than or e than zero, branch if greater than zero, branch if less than or equal to zero, and branch if greater than or equal to zero. So a variety of nice commands here that were quite could be quite useful in our code. So in this case, well, if we run here and we run it with our accumulator, 
set to zero, well, um, obviously the first of these is going to run because um, branch if equal to zero has occurred, and so we show an equal symbol here. Alternatively, though, of course, well, if we set a different value here and we run again, this time we've set to minus 100, and so, uh, well, uh, this branch if not equals to zero will, of course, occur. Now, um, of course, we, we could try a wide variety of values here, and um, what I'd suggest is if you want to try all of these different ones and just you know, confirm to yourself that what I'm saying is true, please download the example and you know, try other values, maybe try reming out some of these and see what happens. Anyway, there we go. Now, those were all conditional branches and the difference between a branch and a jump is the way that the um, destination address is specified. Now, a jump on the MIPS processor specifies almost the entire 32-bit destination address. The top four bits are taken from the program counter and the bottom two bits are always zero because they're all 32-bit aligned commands, but um, you could consider it to be an absolute address and doesn't allow for relocatable code. The code has to run at the address that it was compiled to execute from. However, sometimes we may want to have relocatable code that works in a relative way so that the destination is a relative offset to the current position. Branches work with relative offsets, and so as well as these conditional branches, we have some unconditional ones. The branch command with no condition will do the same as the J command, the jump command, and so we can specify a destination here. So we've specified branch test one and we just do some things when we get there. And we can also do a branch and link, which is like a relative jump and link. So jump and link would jump to a subroutine and then put the return address in the return register. Um, the branch and link does the same. Uh, the destination address is specified relatively though. So I guess I, we could probably use this for relocatable code. So we'll just run these. As I say, um, the functionality is going to be exactly the same as we uh, we did before. I mean, this is a re recreation, if you will, of a previous example. We've got our branch test one here, which is this routine here. Um, it wouldn't return, but we've got a jump at the end. We've, we've used a jump, we could have used a branch, but we are jumping back here just to continue and run the second example, which is branch test three. We're branching and linking. Branching and linking puts the return address in RA. And so at the end here, we can jump back to the return address register RA to return from our subroutine here. And you can see all we've done is the branch subroutine has shown the B and the branch and link subroutine has shown BAL. So those are available to us if we want to do branches rather than jumps for the relocatable code. Now, as I say, um, some of these um, conditional branches are actually pseudo operations. And um, these actually in some cases are made up of these rather strange set commands. These seemed a little bit strange to me, You're coming from the 8-bit world maybe. Um, we actually have these commands that will set registers based on a condition. Now, what they actually do will set the register on the left based on a comparison of the two registers on the right. And the way they work is they actually set the register, in this case, register A0. So in this case, A0 will be set if A1 is less than A2. And A0 will be either be set to the value of zero or it will be set to the value of one. Now I say that, that seems a little bit strange to me. I, in some ways I would have kind of expected all the bits to be set to one, but that's not the way these commands work. So let's just fire these up and let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got our test values here. So we've loaded A0 with zero, and we've loaded A1 with 20 and A2 with 15. And what we've done here is we've done a set then, set if A1 is less than A2 and the result is put in A0. Well, A1 is actually greater than A2 on this first line. A1 is just is 14 and A2 is F in hexadecimal. And so the A0 register has, has got a value of zero. It's been set to zero. Now on the second line here, we've actually set if greater than, if A1 is greater than A2, which indeed it is. So A0 has been set to one. Now, one thing I should point out here, we'll just change these and we'll set A0 to a different value. Let's set it to a value of three, just so that we can see that um, the original value in A0 has actually been cleared in those cases where the condition was not met. So let's just fire this up here and let's just confirm to ourselves that the A0 register has been cleared. So A0 has been loaded with three here, and then A0 has been set based on the 
value a1 and a2. So if a1 was less than a2, a0 would be set to 1. Well, it wasn't, so a0 has been cleared down to 0 here. Now, in these cases, we are working with unsigned values. If SLTU set less than unsigned, GTU is set greater than unsigned, we also, of course, have signed versions with no U at the end, and these work in exactly the same way. So here, A2 has been loaded with a very small value. And so the first time we have set if A1 is less than A2, well, A2 is now tiny. And so A0 has been set to zero here. But on the second one, set then if A1 is greater than A2, well, A1 is indeed greater than A2 because of that that um, positive number is greater than that negative number. So A0 has been set to one. As I say, um, for me coming from the processes I'm used to working with, I wouldn't initially think of any particular reason I would want to use these, but having looked at the MIPS instruction set and the pseudo operations, some of our branch commands are actually using these as part of their functionality. So even if you're like me thinking, well, I don't really see why I might want to use these, you might be using them and not realizing it. but as part of the instruction set, I wanted to discuss them. So there we go. That's it, today's example. And as I say, um, if you want to test these out yourself and make sure you understand them, um, please go ahead and go to the website and download the, ex the examples. Um, there is also a full list of all of the possible branches on my website. So of course, go and have a look at that if you're interested. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.